AMD CEO Lisa Su was on CNBC a few hours ago. I got to record this interview this morning and I thought I would go ahead and react to it for you guys in today's video, okay? This matters significantly for not just AMD. This matters for NVIDIA. This matters for the overall semiconductor stocks. This matters for what's going on in the PC market, the gaming market. This matters for what's going on in the overall stock market because AMD is a big weight in the stock market. NVIDIA is an even bigger weight in the stock market and uh, these stocks matter significantly. So looking forward to getting into this one, reacting to this one with you guys. I appreciate y'all joining me as always. Uh, Lisa Sue definitely with some very interesting comments on several different fronts I thought in this interview. And by the way, thank you everybody subscribe to the channel. We are now at a new all time high in the history of the channel for subscribers, 32,200 plus, I believe now at this point in time. So appreciate y'all being here. And also when this video is over, check out the pinned comment down there to get free access to my new workshop I put together for you guys about a 30 minute video or so. You should get some good value out of that. All right, let's get in. The second half of the year and even more so as we get into- Whoa, 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 what happened here? Multi-generation. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Really strong. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Are all- Whoa, whoa, whoa. You need to check out the ERC program at wondertrust.com. There's money waiting for you. I did, which is why I have time to tend to my precious little trees. He's such a good boy. Carl, we have a... Mr. Wonderful? What happened? Welcome back treat for you. We've got Lisa Sue. Shares of AMD are rising on the company's much better than expected. Calm down, Kramer. Calm down. Results. CEO Lisa Sue joins us now. Lisa, it is so great to have you back on a day when a lot of people felt, I don't know, maybe you're just kind of becoming also ran to NVIDIA, which is completely not true. Oh, Kramer, you suck up. Oh, stop it. Good morning, Jim. Good morning, Carl. It's great to be here with you guys. So tell me. What you've done is that you ordered a lot of chips, a lot of a lot of cards that are all as fast as a lot of NVIDIA's. It, it, it seems like that every what we call hyperscaler wants what you have, which means that you've got not a quarter, not a year, but multi-year revenue stream beginning right now. <laughs> well, first, Jim, I'd like to say, you know, we were uh, very happy with our um, execution in the quarter. You know, we're seeing oh, some positives. Oh, stop it, Lisa Sue. Okay, wait, just a flip and flapjacking moment, okay? I got incredible, incredible amount of respect for Lisa Sue. What she's done with AMD over the years, she took this company from a $2 joke stock. No one, I mean, people thought AMD was going to be bankrupt, to a beast company. Got an incredible amount of respect for Lisa Sue. But damn it, Lisa Sue, that's some BS, okay? I got to call BS when I see BS, okay? That was not a good quarter. That was a dumpster fire of a quarter. That was not good execution. Your revenues were down 18%. Uh, your operating income was non-existent. Your net income uh, was like uh, down 94% on a year over year basis. Those numbers were awful. And when you compare those to what NVIDIA is likely about to put up, which is going to be something like 60% revenue growth, it's not good execution. You're getting your lunch eaten right now. You guys are not executing well. Hopefully things change for AMD next year, and we'll speak about that obviously in this video. But damn it, don't lie to me and say, oh, that was good execution last quarter. Lisa Sue, you know what good execution is. You've had this company report some amazing numbers. That was a dumpster fire quarter out of you and your management team. We saw our PC business actually grow uh, 35% sequentially. By the way, AMD did lose all of its gains. I think it's under $110 right now. Uh, really strong pickup in our uh, newest products, our uh, fourth gen Epic um, you know, CPU products. We had um, great partners like Amazon and Meta, um, as well as Oracle and, um, you know, all announced Microsoft Azure, all announced, you know, sort of new installations what? Uh, with our new. What? What is going on here? Our uh, fourth gen Epic um, you know, CPU products. We had um, great partners like Amazon and Meta. Um, as well as Oracle and, um, you know, all announced my... What? There's a real company? What in the... You gotta be flipping my flapjacks. Azure all announced, you know, sort of new installations uh, with our newest CPUs. And yeah, we're very excited about AI. Um, you know, everyone's talking about AI, but you need all of the computing infrastructure uh, to be there. And, sure. uh, you know, we're all about, you know, multi-year, multi-generational roadmaps and setting up um, not just the hardware and the software, but also the supply chain for that. So yeah, we're, we're excited about what we have in front of us in the second half of the year. Well, let's take them one by one. I, when I listen to your call, I started thinking, my PC is not going to be the PC uh, that it is right now and that 
there, yes, sure, we're coming through a period where there was a glut and coming out of that. Can you give me a, an instance or something of what my PC might be like a year from now because of, of your chips? Yeah, we're, we're excited about AI in all parts of the market. We see it in the largest data centers, to edge devices, to, to PCs. You know, we just launched um, a set of products that actually have um, AI um, inside the PC, so it's really um, on board. And what that means is, you know, our PCs are just going to be much more productive going forward. So, you know, we are coming out of, let's call it a, a volatile cycle for the PCs. We see growth into the second half of the year, and even more so. The reason I'm rolling my eyes is, is nothing to do with what Lisa Sue's saying here. She's bringing out a lot of good points, talking about the products and whatnot. The reason I'm rolling my eyes is because it's like, oh man, they really suck up to AMD. I gotta be honest, okay? Look at this, AMD top sales and profit estimates. Oh my gosh, man. If you know anything about reading an income statement, you know that was an awful quarter they just put up. And it have it framed from this like, oh, it's so, yeah. It's just like, come on, man. And unfortunately, 99.9% .9 of the population doesn't even know how to read an income statement. So we got that issue to, we get into 24 and 25. And the idea is that, you know, your PC should be your productivity tool to help you really organize all aspects of your life. And um, generative AI is going to be a big piece of that. We're working very closely with Microsoft and a number of other, our other, you know, hardware and software partners uh, to really bring all of those experiences to life. So um, it's an exciting time uh, for the PCs. If I have a, uh, a, a Microsoft PC, would I be able to say to it, uh, I've got Lisa Sue on at uh, at eight, at eight at nine fifteen, and I'd like to be able to just talk to you, PC, about what you might think that we should be talking about. Uh, you know what that reminded me of? That reminds me of like uh, when all the politicians grilled Zuckerberg. This was oh gosh, probably a few years ago now at this point in time, and they're asking all these questions, and you're just like, oh my gosh, are you serious? You're really asking that question? Like, what are we talking about here? We're going to have the capability to just organize all of our thoughts and all of our history and all of our capability. That's the beauty of generative AI, because you really do have, you know, not only um, all of the power of the cloud, but you also have all of your personal data as well. And, you know, as I uh, said, this is a multi-year journey. These experiences are going to continue to get better. Uh, we're working very closely with the entire ecosystem to make that happen. And so, um, you know, that's part of the promise of all of this new computing that we're able to bring on. Hey, Lisa, I think one of the more interesting wrinkles this morning is um, your comments about how to satisfy customer uh, demands in China while still complying with export controls. Can you talk about how AMD and maybe uh, corporates at large are, are trying to navigate? That's a good high-level question, sir. Thank you, Carl Quintanilla. Well, I, you know, I think I would step back and say, Carl, you know, overall, I mean, there's just a tremendous interest in AI um, overall. You know, what we've seen, you know, just over the last 90 days is we've seen our customer engagements increase by over seven times. Um, everyone's looking for, you know, how do they get more AI solutions? And, you know, we're very happy that we have a strong roadmap, you know, to do that. So customer engagements uh, are up over seven times, right? Which means there's obviously a lot more people. They're just at the end of the day, it's a lot more companies that are reaching out to AMD talking about, uh, you know, how they can be helped by AMD and trying to figure out product solutions and all this stuff, right? So that's a great sign. That's usually a telltale sign that eventually revenues are going to get in a much better place, and all those engagements will ultimately end up in uh, let's call it a lot of revenue it could be at the end of this year or it could be obviously in 2024 and beyond right we heard a very similar thing from another company last quarter right what is that company you guys should know this company palantir right palantir talked last quarter about all these customer engagements and how in terms of like uh you know how many folks are reaching out to them is is off the charts great okay eventually usually all those engagements and all those leads and whatnot eventually add up to a lot of revenue it's just sometimes you got to wait a few quarters for that or a year for that and then it starts rolling through in a su substantial way right and so that's the hope with amd is that all these engagements and all this interest is ultimately going to start adding up to the numbers because what hasn't added up to the numbers yet right clearly their their last you know the quarter they just reported was awful right so it's really about next quarter the following quarter and obviously sp specifically uh calendar year 2024.
you know, as it relates to China, China is an important market for us. Um, you know, of course, the um, the export regulations are you know very important, and we all see that. But we also see that there's an opportunity to you know develop products um, that really fit within that. And so, you know, this is all part of um, what we do to you know really take our baseline foundational technology and make sure that it's tailored for the right markets. Now, I know you bought Xilinx, and a lot of people have been saying, well, when will Xilinx really Xilinx. kick in? There were a number of references to some of the businesses that I think you picked up with Xilinx, and maybe you can tell us about how the company has changed in terms of its mosaic or where it was before the purchase of Xilinx. Yeah, we really appreciate, uh, first of all, the Xilinx business or our embedded business now has had just a, a tremendous run. So we had, you know, very, very strong the last six quarters in terms of just overall revenue growth. Uh, yeah, and with how bad AMD's numbers are, just understand this. If it wasn't for them buying out Xilinx a year, year and a half ago or so when they made that acquisition, just remember their numbers would be exceptionally worse than what you're seeing in front of you right now. Xilinx has helped them out tremendously over the past year and a half or so when it comes to their numbers specifically over the past year. Love the markets that we're in, uh, the fact that uh, you know we're in aerospace and defense, um, industrial. Which I did like that, that, that addition of Xilinx, buying out Xilinx. I think they paid a pretty hefty price for it. I think long term, it's a very good decision. I think in the short term, they probably could have waited, unfortunately six to nine months and probably paid 30 to 40 percent cheaper for the company that's just my personal opinion uh test measurement emulation these are really great markets that need a lot of computing um, the beauty of it is we're finding a lot of synergy between um, let's call it some of our fpga and adaptive products with our processing products and customers are actually coming to us looking for um, overall solutions for their computing needs so i'm very very pleased with that and on top of that what we've been able does anybody else get like a million scam likely calls all the time? Like, can't they do something about that? Like, why is that such an issue? Like, I feel like that was an issue like 20, 30 years ago. And now I feel like it's some sort of major issue in the past like year or two. It's insane, man. Do is really bring our AI teams together. So uh, we have. Can AI solve that problem? That would be nice. Really increase the amount of resources that we have addressing AI. AI is absolutely our most strategic priority uh, from the largest cloud data centers, for people who are running the largest training and inference models, um, to what you have at the edge, to what an industrial customer would need, what an automotive customer would need, to what you have in the client when we just talked about PCs. And that really is the synergy of you know the great technology that we've gotten from um, you know from our acquisition of Xilinx as well as you know our um, our you know, strong investments over the last few years. At least I know you'd, uh, you'd love to talk about the business rather than the macro, perhaps, especially in light of this downgrade that we got uh, of the U.S. from Fitch. But can you at least give viewers a, a little uh, inkling of how CEOs are even discussing it or whether or not they're discussing it at all this morning? You know, I think um, in general, what I would say is, um, you know, the environment uh, still continues to be a little bit mixed when you looked across uh, the different market segments. But from what we see on the long term basis, uh, we see a growth environment. And, you know, from our business going forward, we see, uh, you know, the second half, actually, we see, you know, nice growth um, across the business. We're particularly excited about the growth in the data center. And again, uh, you know, what we see now is the data center looks to what for us to be um, about, you know, 50 percent or so above in the second half versus where it was in the first half, which is, you know, a really strong um, you know, statement of where we think demand overall is. So, you know, agree that there is some, you know, mixed signals in the market and we have to navigate through those. But overall, we see a bias towards the positive. One last question, Lisa. Uh, at this time last year, I was worried that you had way too many chips for a client or in other words, for PC. Do you have enough of the MI300, which is the rival? equivalent, I mean, some people say the H100 of, of NVIDIA, to be able to make it so that you can uh, literally fulfill all the orders that you have? Well, Jim, you know, one of the things that we are really good at is managing um, the overall supply chain. And, you know, as, uh, as we work through some of the inventory on the PC side, we've worked through um, a lot of that. And I can tell you on our MI300 or on our AI chips, we've been planning for this opportunity. Uh, it's a really important opportunity. I think um, a lot of customers want to be able to ramp as soon as possible. We've been setting up this supply chain for the last couple of quarters, and we feel very good about what we have in the second half and into 
to 2024 as we really participate in, you know, sort of the most important technology trend uh, over the next five years. So uh, it's an exciting time, um, I would say, to be in AI and in computing, but uh, we're ready for it. Well, it's true, Chris. It's good to know that it's just not NVIDIA and no one else. I think it's NVIDIA and AMD. Issa Sue, CEO of AMD, thank you so much for coming on. It should be eventually just NVIDIA is obviously eating their lunch in the short term. Now, with that being said, uh, let me just wrap up my thoughts around that interview, and then I'll talk about if I'm actually interested in buying AMD stock, right, which I don't have a position right now, but I'll address if I'm interested in buying a position, okay? So I thought that interview was good other than the comment that she's like, oh, the execution was good in the quarter because it just wasn't. Um, those were really, really bad numbers across the board. So clearly they've got work to do. It does sound like the back half of this year is going to be much better for them. And it does sound like, you know, next year and future years should be very good for AMD. Okay. Now, with that being said, am I personally interested in buying AMD stock? I will say this. Yes especially if we can see a really nice pullback in the market. That's going to make give me extra kind of uh, confidence in kind of buying AMD. They have a really good uh, balance sheet on the company. Obviously, Lisa Sue's a great CEO. She's proven that over the past seven, eight, seven or eight years, right? Long term, they have insane growth, right? And so I look at a company like AMD and I say, the valuation is not too crazy. They're coming off a very bad time for their business, but it looks like things are going to be up and better from here. And I like that story. So, you know, if this stock, especially if it continues to pull down, I could likely start a position in it. Um, and then we'll go from there. I appreciate everybody joining me as always. Thanks so much, folks. Thanks for being subscribed. New all-time high subscribers in the history of the channel. I appreciate y'all being here. Make sure you get that free workshop that I have for you guys that's pinned comment down there. It's about a 28 to 30 minute video, roughly. Um, you're gonna definitely get some gems dropped in that one. It's free to access that, that is pinned comment. Much love and have a great day.